Of the 38 species of snakes that are native to North Carolina, there is one species which is perhaps the most widely known and frequently encountered snake in the entire state. Today, we are searching for and learning how to safely handle one of my favorite snakes of all time, the black rat snake. Now, while these snakes are habitat generalists, which can be found in a wide variety of areas, I always like to search for black rat snakes on the edges of fields or forests. Oftentimes, when I'm looking for rat snakes in these forested areas, one thing I always check is coarse woody debris, because the rat snakes aren't usually under them, but they'll oftentimes be somewhere around them searching for rodents. And I just found a snake here in this log actually, that is not a rat snake. Here we have a little southern ringneck snake. Now I think that ringneck snakes are some of the coolest fossil reels we have here in North Carolina. You can see that namesake ring right here behind the head is a dead giveaway. And one really amazing thing about ringnecks that surprises lots of people is if we actually look at its belly here, you can see it has a really, really beautiful ventral coloration. I mean, just amazing with these little black triangles offset by that orange or red background. Now, ringnecks are small fossorials that rarely exceed about 16 inches in length. This is actually a pretty typical adult size. Now, ringnecks are also interesting compared to the other fossorials we have because these are much more associated with wet areas because ringnecks love to eat salamanders. So oftentimes you'll find ringneck snakes near creeks or wetlands or in really moist coarse woody debris like this. And also unlike the other fossil reels, ringneck snakes are actually a rear fanged venomous species. So that venom is not strong enough to hurt humans. It's nothing that you need to worry about, but it is a very mild neurotoxic venom that's enough to help them incapacitate invertebrates and small vertebrate prey. What a treat to see a ringneck snake out today. Even though we haven't found a rat snake yet today, the weather is still great. And I'm thinking about moving to a new spot kind of adjacent to an old field that I think could produce us our target species. What a cool little snake. We'll set it right back down in its log and let it go about its day. Bye friend. Oh yes, 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 yes. Hey, oh, it's perfect. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Hey, now when I first approach, I wanna lightly just grab the back third of the body like this. See how it reacts. Let's see if I can pull it into frame here. And then I'll get my second hand about two thirds of the way down the body. And sometimes this is where they get a little freaked out, but not this one, okay? And they'll often come and give you a little sniff like that. They might tense up a little bit like this one did, but as you can see, wow, this is a gorgeous, black rat snake. Oh my gosh, absolutely beautiful. Black rat snakes are definitely in my top five favorite snakes of all time, because not only are these some of the largest snakes that we have in North Carolina, reaching lengths of over six feet long, they are oftentimes very friendly snakes and actually way easier to work with than most people would think based on their size alone. I always get so many questions about what is the best way to handle a wild snake. So while I have such a beautiful and cooperative individual, I'll kind of talk you through what is going through my head when I'm working with a wild snake. So you can see my hands are actually open and I'm just letting this rat snake slither across the top of my hands. So basically what I'm trying to do is just create a climbing surface for the snake. I am not trying to control its movements or restrict it at all because that could be interpreted as a sign of predation and even worse, it could actually hurt the snake because they have very fragile ribs. Occasionally you'll get a bitey rat snake and if that's the case, you could always bag them up to relocate them and you're gonna wanna and try and move them as little distance away as possible to release them. So if you're moving them out of someone's yard, maybe just drop them off in the woods. And there's a good chance that they'll come back eventually. But the reason you don't wanna move a snake too far is because they are very well suited for their home ranges and moving them outside of their home range can actually cause them to die a lot of the time. Now, rat snakes are also so important for our ecosystems because these rodents that they are consuming are actually the source of a lot of diseases that negatively impact humans. So lots of ticks will pick up nasty infections like Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever or Aerolycosis when they attach to small mammals. And if there's less small mammals for the ticks to attach to, we will get less tick-borne illnesses. So rat snakes, not only are they friendly, not only are they cute, they are also keeping us safe and healthy. It's so bizarre to me that people are still afraid of these animals just because they're large 
and they can pop up unexpectedly when their behavior is completely contrary to what most people associate with snakes. I mean, this is not an aggressive animal. This is not even a defensive animal. This is just a beautiful and curious reptile that is doing its best to survive just like you and I. I will set this amazing snake right back down and let it continue about its day. What a beautiful animal. I love rat snakes. If you enjoyed learning about how to befriend a black rat snake in today's video, I think you'd also really enjoy seeing my encounter with a beautiful eastern king snake last year in Georgia. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.